Um, in the past few lectures, we have been looking at measure and integration on product spaces. So, let us just, we will continue doing that uh, in this lecture also. Uh, so, we will be studying what are called Fibonacci theorems. We had proved uh, some versions of Fibonacci theorems in the previous lectures. So, let us recall what are those uh, theorems that we have proved. So, in the, we first proved what is called Fibonacci theorem 1, which said that suppose f is a uh, function defined on the product space x cross y taking values in the real line and suppose this function f is non negative and it is measurable with respect to the product sigma algebra a times b. So, f is a non negative measurable function then uh, we claim the following statements hold namely if we fix one of the variables for this function say x not belonging to x or fix the other variable y not belonging to y, then with respect to the other variable, these functions become uh, non-negative measurable with respect to the corresponding sigma algebras. So, for example, if x 0 is in x is fixed, then the function y going to f of x 0 y is a function of the variable y on the space y. So, it becomes measurable with respect to the sigma algebra b. And similarly, for every fixed x 0, the function for every uh, fixed y 0 in y, the function x going to f of uh, x y 0 is a measurable function on x with respect to the sigma algebra a. So, these two, so for every one of the variables fixed in the other variable, it becomes a non-negative measurable function. So, once it is non-negative measurable, you can integrate it out. So, look at the integral of f x y d mu x the variable y is fixed. So, you are integrating with respect to x. So, the integral depends on y. So, this gives us a function y going to integral of x of f x y with respect to the variable x. And similarly, if you integrate out the other variable y, then you get a function of x namely x going to integral over y of f x y d mu y. So, the, the second claim is that these functions are again non-negative measurable functions of y and x respectively. And once uh, these are non-negative measurable functions, you can integrate out the other variable now. So, integrate the with respect to the variable x. So, uh, you get one of the iterated integrals namely integral with respect to x and then integral with respect to y of f x y d nu y is equal to is equal to the other iterated integral namely first integrate with respect to x and then with respect to y. Uh, the, these two iterated integrals are equal and the claim is this is equal to the integral of the given non-negative function f x y over with respect to the product sigma algebra. So, as we had uh, uh, stressed that the importance of this theorem lies in the fact that to integrate a function of two variables f x y, we can fix either of the variables first integrate it out and then integrate out the other variable. So, you can in do integration with respect to one variable at a time. So, this was uh, the called Fibonacci theorem 1 for functions which are non-negative measurable f x y. And then we extended this theorem to functions which are uh, integrable. So, that we called as Fibonacci theorem 2 and that stated that let f be a a integrable function on the product sigma algebra uh, product space. So, f is in L 1 of mu cross nu. Then the following statements uh, hold namely, if you fix one of the variables say x or y, then uh, as a function of the other variable, these functions are integrable, but not for almost all uh, uh, variable fix for almost all uh, points uh, whichever are fixed. For, so, for example, if uh, you are fixing y, then it says that for almost all y, the function x going to f of x y is an integrable function and similarly, for uh, every almost all x fixed, y going to f of x y is a integrable uh, function. So, when you fix one variable at a time, for almost all uh, uh, such fixings, the function of uh, other variable are integrable. So, you can integrate out. So, you get a function y going to integral over x of f x y d mu x and similarly, the other function is x going to the integral over y 
with respect to y of f x y d nu y. So, these two functions are again, so the claim is that these two functions are again integrable uh, with respect to the corresponding measures nu and mu. And so, you can integrate them out and what you get is that the iterated integrals once again in this case are equal and equal to the integral of the product uh, of the function with respect to the product measure. So, basically what we are saying is that the two iterated integrals are equal to the integral of the uh, function with respect to the product measure whenever f is a integrable function. So, these two theorems we had proved and we want to uh, give a one more uh, version of this theorem. So, to do that we need to uh, prove a proposition about integrable functions on the product uh, space. So, let us take a function f uh, on the product space f x y on the product space a cross b. Then the claim is that the following statements are equivalent for one the function is L 1 function is uh, as a product as a function of two variables the function is integrable. So, that is f belongs to L 1. Secondly, if you look at the absolute value of the function f and look at its iterated integral with respect to x or y. So, look at the absolute value of the function f that is a non negative measurable function. So, look at its uh, iterated integral first integral with respect to x and then with respect to y that is finite. So, that is the second uh, condition and the third is you can interchange this. So, look at the other iterated integral that first integrate with respect to y and then with respect to x. So, then this is the second iterated integral that is finite and fourthly. So, these three conditions we want to show these three conditions are equivalent. So, let us prove them. So, let us uh, first assume. So, f is a function given on the product space x cross y to r okay. and so let us assume one assume one that is namely saying that f belongs to L 1 of x cross y. To show we want to show two namely that the iterated integral of mod f x y d mu of x and then integrate that with respect to y. So, that is d nu y is finite. So, this is what we want to show. Now, since f is um, since f is integrable, so the condition that f is integrable. So, one implies that integral uh, of the function mod of f x y with respect to the product sigma algebra uh, product measure mu cross nu is finite over the product space. right? And now, let us uh, note that mod f x y is a non negative is a non negative measurable function on x cross y. So, it is a non negative measurable for x cross y. So, um, Fubini's theorem 1 is applicable. So, by Fubini's theorem 1, so we get implies by Fubini's theorem 1, which was for a non negative. So, by Fubini's theorem 1 for non negative functions, what we get is that the iterated integral of so mod f x y, the iterated integral with respect to x and then with respect to y d uh, mu x d nu y must be equal to the double uh, the integral over the product space x cross y of mod f x y d of mu cross nu which is given to be finite. Okay. So, that implies that this, uh, this iterated integral is finite by uh, the second condition. Okay. So, what we have shown is, so hence, so 1 implies 2. Okay. Let us uh, uh, try to show that uh, uh, 2 implies 1. Okay. So, let us uh, show that 2 implies 1. 
So, what is 2? So, the condition 2 says that it inter integral over x of mod f x y d mu x that integrated with respect to y d nu y is finite. Okay? That is given to be finite. So, once again, once again we observe that mod of f x y is a non negative measurable function. So, by implies by Fubini's theorem 1 that the double integral. So, now we can revert that. So, double uh, integral so that means integral of the product space of f x y d mu cross nu must be of absolute value of f x y must be equal to the iterated integral. So, that is integral over y integral over x of mod f x y d of uh, d mu x and d nu of y and that is given to be finite by 2. So, implies that 1 holds namely integral of mod f with respect to the product measure is finite that is that f belongs to L 1. So, what we have shown is that uh, the condition 1 is equivalent to condition 2 and uh, a similar proof uh, implies that condition 2 is also equivalent to condition 1. So, saying that the function is integrable is equivalent to saying that uh, the either of the iterated integrals of mod f are finite. So, all these three are equivalent conditions. So, these can be put into um, the statement of the Fubini's theorem. So, combining Fubini's theorem 1, 2 and then this proposition gives us what I call as the combined uh, Fubini's theorem. Basically, combined Fubini's theorem gives you conditions under which you can say that the iterated integrals of a function of two variable are equal to are equal and equal to the integral of the uh, uh, function over the product measure space. So, let us look at the uh, combined uh, Fubini's theorem which says let x a mu and y b nu be sigma finite measure spaces. Right? We have been working under uh, sigma finite, finiteness because the product uh, measure is defined only for sigma finite measures. So, if two sigma finite measure spaces are given and you are given a function f on the product set x cross y which is measurable with respect to the product sigma algebra a times b then the following conditions any one of the following conditions namely f is non negative and secondly f is integrable and the third condition that is the iterated integral of mod f with respect to y and then with respect to x is finite or the other one the iterated integral of mod f with respect to mu and then with respect to nu is finite. So, if any one of these four conditions is satisfied then we can say that the integral of the function f over x cross y with respect to the product sigma algebra is equal to both of the iterated integrals and namely either integrating with respect to y first and then with respect to x or integrating with respect to x first and then with respect to y. So, basically uh, these three uh, integrals are equal in the sense that if either of them exists then all the three will exist and are equal. So, basically Fubini's theorem says that the two iterated integrals are equal and equal to the product uh, inter equal to the integral over the with respect to the product measure whenever either of these uh, things uh, either of these uh, integrals uh, are defined. For example, if f is non negative then uh, these are all defined and hence they should be equal by Fubini's theorem 1 and if f is L 1 then the product then integral of f x y over x cross y that exists. So, this these all three must be equal and uh, other iterative integrals of mod f they are equivalent to saying f is L 1. So, they all will be uh, equal. So, this is what uh, is called the combined Fubini's theorem and it is of uh, importance. Uh, we will see a lot of applications of this uh, soon. So, uh, let us look at uh, some uh, examples. So, uh, I want to stress this point 
namely that in the statement of the theorem, we have assumed the condition that mu and nu are sigma finite uh, measures. So, these conditions are going to be important. So, let us look at some examples to illustrate this. So, let us look at uh, the space when x is equal to y is equal to 0 1. So, my underlying space is x is same as y as uh, the interval 0 1 and the two sigma algebras sigma algebra A is same as the sigma algebra B is equal to Borel sigma algebra the sigma algebra of Borel subsets of uh, uh, 0 1. So, let us define the measure mu to be the Lebesgue measure on A and the measure nu on uh, the, when treated as y 0 1 as treated as other space we define it to be the counting measure. So, what is the counting measure? Counting measure is the number of elements in a set E if the set E is finite otherwise it is equal to plus infinity. So, we have got uh, two measure spaces. So, let us uh, look at uh, the example that we have gotten. So, we have got uh, x which is equal to 0 1. The sigma algebra A is the Borel sigma algebra on 0 1 and mu is Lebesgue measure. On the other side, we have got y which is again 0 1 and the sigma algebra B is again the sigma algebra of Borel subset of 0 1 and we have got nu which is equal to the counting measure. Okay. So, counting measure as defined it is if the set E is finite then it is number of elements other it is equal to plus infinity. So, now let us look at the product space x cross y a times b and mu cross nu. So, let us look at the product space. So, let us look at uh, the set. So, we are going to look at the set D which is uh, the set x is equal to y. So, this is uh, you will note that x cross y this is a subset of x cross y. So, the claim is that this is a closed subset of x cross y and hence is an element in a cross b. So, what is our space x cross y? x cross y is if you pictureize it is just 0 1 cross 0 1. Okay. So, that is the our space this is 1 1. And what is uh, D? We are looking at the set D which is contained in this the set D which is contained in this. So, that is D is equal to x comma y x is equal to y. So, that is the so that is a this line is my D. So, the claim is that this D is a Borel set. So, one way of looking at it is that D is closed in x cross y. Uh, what is the meaning of a, uh, that this set is closed? So, one way of showing that this is a closed subset of uh, 0 1 is uh, to show that it contains all its uh, uh, limit points that is one way of showing it. So, if I take a sequence x n comma y n belonging to D and x n comma y n converges to say x y okay then claim we should be able to show that x is equal to y but let us note x n y n belonging to d that implies so note that x n is equal to y n because x n comma y n belongs to d is the diagonal and x n y n converging to x y so, this implies so this condition implies that x n converges to x and y n converges to y. So, x n is equal to y n, x n converges to x, y n converges to y. So, all that will imply that x is equal to y. So, this set D, the set D is a closed subset of 0 1. So, implying that D belongs to the product sigma algebra A times B. Okay. So, that is uh, the D is a closed subset of uh, 0 1. Next, we want to compute 
the iterated integrals of the indicator function of the set D of this diagonal with respect to mu and the claim is that the if I integrate if I fix one of the variables say y and integrate the indicator function of d with respect to x then this is equal to 0 for every y and the other other integral when we fix x integrate with respect to y the counting measure that is equal to 1 for every x. So, that will imply that the two iterated integrals are not equal one of them is equal to 0 and the other one is equal to 1. So, let us verify this first. So, let us verify that the so let us verify the condition that if I take the indicator function of the set D x y and integrate with respect to mu okay, over x. So, the claim so the first claim is that this is equal to 0 for every y belonging to y. So, let us see why is uh, this integral equal to 0 to uh, note that to show that let us observe that for fix for fix y we want to compute chi the indicator function of d at x y. So, what is that equal to? So, this is equal to uh, uh, this is equal to 1 if x comma y belongs to d that means, x is equal to y and it is 0 if x is not equal to y. Okay. So, this function uh, so this function uh, the indicator function of uh, uh, the indicator function of the diagonal for y fix takes only two values 1 and 0 and only at one point it takes the value y it takes the value 1 when x is equal to y at all, all other points it is just uh, uh, 0. So, it is the indicator function of a singleton set and hence so, this implies that integral over x chi d x y uh, d mu x is equal to the, the indicator function of uh, the singleton set namely y x d mu x and that is single point and measure the mu is the Lebesgue measure. So, this is equal to 0. So, that says so, so a simple observation that the indicator function of the diagonal x y is equal to 1 if x y is fixed. So, is x is equal to y otherwise it is 0. So, that proves that this is equal to 0 and similarly let us uh, compute the other one for fix x let us look at the indicator function of x y equal to. So, what is that equal to? So, that is again equal to 1 if y is equal to x and is 0 if y is not equal to x that is again the same function, but now let us observe that. The, so, the if I integrate with respect to y of the indicator function of d x y with respect to d nu y and the nu is the counting measure. So, for one point Okay, for one of the one point when y is equal to x the value is 1. So, the value is 1 for one point and the measure of that single point is equal to 1. So, this is equal to 1 for every x belonging to for every x belonging to x. So, that proves the required claim namely that the uh, so that proves the required claim namely the in the integral of d uh, indicator function of d for every y fix is 0 and for every uh, x fixed is 1. So, the iterated integral uh, with respect to uh, one of uh, one of the iterated integral is equal to 0 while the other iterated integral is equal to 1. So, that seems to contradict uh, Fibonacci's theorem because the indicator function is a non negative function that the two iterated integrals are not equal, but that is not the case because the measures involved both of them are not sigma uh, not both of them are sigma uh, uh, Lebesgue measure is sigma finite, but the counting measure is uh, not sigma finite. So, this does not contradict Fibonacci's theorem since the measure counting measure is not sigma finite. You 
the counting measure of the whole uh, interval 0 1 is infinite and you cannot uh, divide it into countable number of pieces each having finite because 0 1 is uncountable. So, the counting measure is not sigma finite. So, that is why this does not uh, contradict Fibonacci's theorem. 